Welcome back. This week we're going to go with my Tenet 2. Um, we're going to do this one in the original colors. This was the first video uh, that I ever shot uh, going back probably almost three years ago now. Um, this is the first fly I designed. A um, little story behind the name, but we can get to that one in another, another time and place. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get that one out and this is a relatively quick tie um, relatively quick for an articulated streamer it, it, it's a it's a pretty quick pattern um, you're not building a head or anything like that the body's just UV polar so so it ties pretty quick um, there there's some things that I've changed on the pattern just minor tweaks just like anything else you know I mean you tie something you see something over the years, it's like oh, I could do this a little bit better. Um, overall, it doesn't really make a big difference on the swim or anything like that. But uh, just overall appearance on the vice more than anything, I think, is what uh, really changes. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this one. In the vice, I've got an MFC 7050 size 4. Get that on there. And to start on this, I'm going to go with a, this is a sunburst yellow. I'm going to go with the sunburst yellow um, tail here. And then uh, I'll have some brown marabou over the top. Set that off to the side. Measure this out, the length of the hook, slightly longer, and get that secure, and work it back to the barbier hook. Same thing as always on that, and then I'm just going to bring this forward to make sure it's nice and even. And trim that and then I'm gonna go over this or I'm gonna have some internal flash in the tail this is just a copper holographic flash boo and get four strands in there take these four strands and measure them out to the length of the tail stop them just short of the length or just short of the overall length of that tail and then we'll bring this around on the opposite side same thing if you've watched me tie anything with marabou tails it's it's no different now we're going to take a brown over the top of this and find a good plume here sometimes this Sometimes this brown can wind up being pretty sparse. So I want to find something just a little bit thicker. That way it'll it'll mask that uh, or it'll it'll kind of tone down that sunburst. And when it gets wet, um, it, it does uh, the the sunburst does kind of disappear a little bit. It's not as prominent as what you'll see it here on the vise. But um, I still like to find something just a little bit thicker. That way it tones it down just slightly like I was saying. And we'll get that wrapped in there and secured. It's just slightly longer, as you can see right there, than the yellow, just slightly. I'm going to go with some UV polar for the body, like I was saying in the beginning. I'm going to find the end that I like here. And that seems to be pretty straight. I'm going to get that secured onto the hook. And we'll 
just half hitch. I'm going to stop a little bit shy of the eye of that hook and start working this to the front. Every four to five wraps, just make sure that the fibers are going the direction that you want on trap anything that may have got caught and then give that a stretch. And we're going to stop that one right there. Like I said, leaving just a little bit in front of the eye of the hook to get the uh, rubber legs and then the marabou overwing on there. Just make a couple of wraps back and even. Just have a nice even spot to work with there. None of that UV puller is really coming forward on us. And then just X over top of those rubber legs, pull down, and they're secure. I'm going to trim these to where they're going to be just back to the length of that tail. You can go a little shorter if you want. Um, I like them about the length of the tail. Now the last thing for this back hook is we're going to take this, we're going to take some woolly bugger marabou and we're going to build this overwing. One thing that I do now that I didn't on the other ones is this is a lot longer now. It goes all the way into the back in this tail. Before I used to have them a little short and it would stop right about at the tying point. I want it going about a third of the way back, that tail. So we'll just get that in place, a couple of loose wraps, secure it, and then we'll go ahead and whip finish this back. Dogs are in the back, causing a little bit of commotion, as usual. Alright, let's see what I got here. This is just a tan, I'm going to tone this down a little bit. Just tone that thread down slightly. And then before I take it out of the vise, I'm going to grab my wire. If I can get it off the bench here. There we go. Grab my wire, run that through there. Give that a little pull. And then just one bead on this one is all I use. Just the one bead. So we're going to take that one out. We're going to go with a size two for the front. And then just get thread base down here. Same as before, take it back to the barb of the hook. Get a little bit more thread down and then I'm going to bring this back. To tie in this uh, back hook. Everything's running parallel, nice and clean. I'm going to pull this a little bit forward. There we go. I got the distance that I want on my connection, and I'm just going to work this to the front. I'm going to double over these, this connection wire and get it secured in place if I can get, there we go. That's doubled over. Now I'm going to take this, same thing, double that side over, and now I'm going to build a skirt. All right. 
before I go working on that, I'm just going to take a straw here and cover up this back hook. Keeps those rubber legs out of the way, keeps everything from getting into the, uh, just getting in your way when you're tying in this, this back section, or this skirt section. So I'm just going to take a little bit of marabou off of the sides here. I'm going to bust those tips up a little. And then I want to come back and cover up my connection. Everything looks pretty clean there. Same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to cover up my connection. Get everything secure there. Now what I should have done beforehand was cut all of those tips there. They'll add a little bit of bulk from where you peel it off of the stem. But looks like we're pretty good there. Looks like we're pretty good. I'm gonna find another section here. Find a good piece. Yes. Like I said, back to the woolly bugger marabou. I just want to find a good piece here because I'm going to have another piece on top of this just to cover that section up and the back just kind of. It, it fills that section out a little bit. Without this on the top, it looks a little bit lost. And I like the way that it has a transition going to that back section of Marabou. And when I peel this off, you'll see what I mean. There's that nice little transition that runs right there. Gives you some pretty good coverage Now we're going to go back to the UV. And we're going to work this body in. Leaving ourselves a little bit of room here at the front. See how those rubber legs kind of want to get in your way? I should have kept that straw on, but I wanted to point out that transition so but now we're working away from them so we'll be in good shape same thing we're going to work this on our way up and i think i want one more wrap there that looks pretty good that looks pretty good and trim that uv we're done with that I'm going to take my thread right to where I left off. And there we go. I knew I had a set of legs over here. On the back, I had two legs. This one, I'm going to have three. And these are just brown pumpkin rubber legs. Um, whatever color you, you feel looks best with the combination that you're working with, go ahead. There's, there's no real no real hard and fast rule as to what color needs to be used. I'm going to just throw a quick half inch in there because that's going to slide around on me a little bit. Then I'm going to go back to the Wooly Bugger Marabou and I want a really good section here. I want a really good piece for this final overwing. This one looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. If I have to, I'll grab a little bit extra to really fill out the bulk in it. But I think this one's going to work pretty well for us. Yeah. Then I want that running back in to about the third way point where I tied in 
that skirt. Get some good loose wraps on there. Make sure your stem's going right down the center. It's not going to kick to the side on you or anything. And there we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just cut these legs right now. Because I'm going to throw them in a straw to get everything away from me. That way I can work on this collar section. I'm going to take some red Sanyos on this. And I'm just working that in my hand to where I get a good center stack on this bundle. And it's going to be secure for me. flip that over before I work on anything else and just trim that red there's that nice little throat right there it's just a nice little it's just a nice accent um, especially on the lighter colored flies like your yellows and your whites uh, even the olives and it just pops a little bit and I really think that that's a, a secondary trigger point um, on this fly now I want to take some brown and I'm going to take a decent amount of this well not really a decent amount but probably double what you use for the red and I'm going to throw this in right over the top here And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Going right in front of that red. Get a couple of loose wraps in the front of that and then really pull down. Now that'll cover up that red slightly. And then we're going to whip finish. And for the head on this one, I do this in a cone head as well. Um, but we're going to do the original here. And it's just going to be a small, medium fish skull. And I'm going to throw that over the top, right like that. I know that everything's good there. I got good clearance, nothing's in the way. I'm going to take some gel and just touch this right on the top. I just want a little dab on the top of that. And then another one on the bottom. Slide that over. And then, while that's setting, that gel sets a little bit slower than uh, something, say like a, a zap or something like that. I'm just gonna put a dam of thread in the front here. Typically I'd use black, but I don't have it loaded on the bobbin right now, so I'll just use white and then color it up. Get that out of the way. Let's see here. I'll just go with black for this. And then before I finish that off. I'm just going to take my scissors here and I'm going to follow the head and I'm just going to push that right back. Same thing on the bottom. I'm just following the path of that head, resting my scissors right on it, and then I take a quick trim and then there we go. Before that glue kicks, I'm just going to turn my head 
where I want it. It's riding centered. Remove these, remove this straw, and then that way we can get the legs around here. There's one, two, three on each side. Good to go. Now you can take a little bit of zap in this front section here just to touch up this thread. I want just a little bit on that and then that way it's going to go from the thread onto that metal as well and it kind of gives it like a, it gives a good solid connection for you on that. And then I'm going to take this just an old piece of marabou. I'm going to run that stem right through there and that's going to collect all of that extra glue that's on there. So, get those legs out of the way so it's sitting how I want them. There we go. Get my marabou coming around. There it is. There is the finished fish skull head uh, articulated tenant too. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments on this one, as always, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly.